The most inspiring people I've known, says Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, are those who have known trials and struggles and found their way out of the depths. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've spent my life working with leaders in organizations on how to change their culture. But this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk at work and beyond, then this podcast is for you. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Walking Your Talk. In the series, Stories About Symbols, where I'm talking to you about what I have seen in leaders and where I have found the most inspiration, the most typical examples, which you might be able to adopt in your culture journey. Leaders often ask me, what is the one thing? You know how people love to know what the one thing is, the one powerful thing that they could do that would really show people that they were walking their talk and that they were asking of others no more than what they were already doing themselves or what they were asking of themselves and so therefore that they're credible. Now, of course, as you know, it's never one thing. It's always the habits of many small things. But I think I can look back over the leaders that I've worked with and tell you some stories of moments where leaders did something that was talked about and remembered as a turning point, where people in the organization became convinced that this was real and decided, or most of them decided to follow and realized that the future lay in the direction that was being modeled by this leader. That, of course, is what we're all looking for. Now, some of you listening will be familiar with the concept of above and below the line where above the line means that in the face of something happening that isn't good or that you don't like, your response is one of seeking what you can do, what you can learn from it, how you might have contributed, how you might be able to take action now to improve the situation. And below the line is where we respond to such situations by focusing on blaming others or voicing very reasonable reasons, justifications, why the fault or the problem sits outside of ourselves. And this is a model which many of our clients use as a, as a foundation for the work they do on culture, because it opens up the possibility of growth and change and ownership and positive action and all those good things that we need. So a few months ago, A CEO that I know became involved in a situation where there were many, many reasonable and justifiable reasons why he could go below the line. What had happened was he'd done a press interview and the journalist had taken something that he said out of context, we all know that can happen, and blown it up and given it a twist which, when printed, caused the media hype and and upset many important stakeholders. So taken in the context with which it was written, you can understand why some of those stakeholders got upset. But when you read the full transcript, you saw a very different story. But of course, nobody saw that. So this is what the CEO did. This was the moment. This was the the move he made that just made such a difference. He took full responsibility. He wrote to all employees and apologised. He apologised that he hadn't anticipated what could have happened with his words and for his part in what then happened. And he said, which was quite lovely, that he knew how hard his people were working to build up the company's reputation with all its stakeholders and that what had happened would have made their job that much harder. Now, there are many ways in which a leader can role model behaviour, but the most powerful that I have noticed over the years is where it involves some vulnerability. And for me, that's exactly what that email was. It was above the line, of course, so absolutely role modeling that. But it also took responsibility and it showed some vulnerability. And by vulnerability, I mean, you know, the admission of mistake or some humility or acknowledging that you don't know something. And it's this that I would nominate as the most powerful thing a leader can do 
to get that real credibility of someone who walks their talk. Now, why would I say that? Because I think it shows a recognition that we all have to learn and we've all got to grow to pull off the culture change that we're seeking. And unfortunately, what I see and what I think many of us see all too often are presentations about culture or about values or about behaviours, which somehow suggest, although it may not be said directly, but the tone suggests that the leaders kind of have all this handled, fully baked, and now they're asking everyone else to come along. And this, I think, is where the cynicism comes from. Whereas in this moment, the media are upset past, the reputation can be rebuilt, but people's memory of the response, of this CEO's response, never fades. It's such a symbol. They wanted everyone to go above the line and own stuff and all that good thing. And then this had happened. And he just said, I've done some damage. I own it. Boom. So strong. I saw a similar thing happen, actually, with another executive who stood up in front of a group of about 200 people and talked about the struggle that he'd had to keep himself from going below the line when he was dealing with a business partner they have who was kind of pretty difficult. It was amazing. I can't tell you how many people came to me afterwards and said that they had never heard an executive of the company be so open about his own shortcomings and to actually admit that he had room to grow. So that would be my answer to the question, what is the one thing that a leader can do that will demonstrate that they're capable of role modeling the culture. It's not just about being a great model yourself. It's actually more about being human and talking about your own growth journey so that everyone else can see that you as well as them are on a path. I mean, everyone can see what you're talking about anyway, right? I mean, they know, they know what your behavior is like, by the way. And they don't expect you to be perfect. But I think we do expect our leaders to be sufficiently self-aware to catch themselves when they fall into old patterns of behavior. And that once you've set that as an aspiration and that you want to eliminate those from your culture, the minimum that we expect is for anyone, whether they're a leader, whether they're a colleague, to be able to say, I didn't quite get it right that time. There was an opportunity. I missed it. I apologize. Let's move on. I'm learning. So here's my suggestion. Talk to people about your own behavior and your own growth goals. Share the data you received, for example, in 360s or any other kind of survey instruments about your own behavior. Tell stories of the great behavior you see in others. We've talked about that in other episodes about recognizing and encouraging behavior in others. And then when you tell stories about yourself, follow that format described by Joseph Campbell in his Hero's Journey, where he talks about you used to do things one way, something happened, jolted you out of that pattern, you got into a tough time, there was a problem, it hurt, you hurt. And then you eventually emerge having learnt, having grown, having battled with some demon and emerged a better person. So walking your talk is not about being perfect. It's about being honest and vulnerable and being able to recognize in yourself when you don't reach the standard that you're asking of yourself and of other people and being prepared to talk about that, have that humility, have that humanness which says we're all in this together. That's where the power lies. And what you're really role modeling there, of course, is learning and growth rather than being perfect. So I hope you'll go really well with this. Experiment with it. See how far you can go. Just see if you can stretch yourself a little bit outside comfort zone in terms of your willingness to share these things with other people. And next time, please join me and we'll hear more stories of the symbols which lead to you being able to walk your talk. Thank you for listening.